February is Black History Month, a time to honor the contributions of black Canadians. But our next guest says Canada needs to put a focus on making black health a priority. Black communities are disproportionately affected by some diseases. For example, black adults are about twice as likely to develop diabetes as white adults. The Black Health Alliance is now calling for racial disparities like this to be specifically addressed. Daylon Taylor is the president of that organization and she joins me now. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. So generally speaking, in what ways is the healthcare system in our country not addressing the specific needs of the black community? Well, if you look at the specific issues that affect our community and the responses that are in the healthcare system to address these unique um, situations, there are none. Uh, we have mainstream approaches, which has been failing black individuals, uh, you know, across Canada. So we need to have specific measures that are designed to really speak to these issues and, and health-related situations that we, we um, our community encounter. So what would some of those specific measures be? If I were to say, you have carte blanche to fix this system right now, what's at the top of your list? Okay, so at the top of our list, we need uh, culturally appropriate services right across the healthcare spectrum. We need specific funding uh, designed to research and better understand some of these issues so that we can develop uh, specific um, re uh, re resolutions to these issues. We know what the broader issues are. We don't know what the nuances are to fix these. And we don't have that in our healthcare system. We need uh, the health minister to sit with black community uh, leaders and black community organizations to get a better sense of what some of the struggles are that they are seeing and what some of those unique responses should be uh, in order to fix them. Could, could we circle back to your first point? You, you, you said um, culturally specific um, yes. uh, uh, solutions. What would some of those be? Give me some context for something like okay. that. So one of the examples that I, I, I draw on, uh, Dr. Anya Noron, she recently wrote an article uh, in the University of Toronto of the School of Medicine um, magazine. And in it, she talks about the, a, a patient advocate, Serena uh, Thompson, who suffers from sickle cell. And this comes, sickle cell, you have intense pain from time to time and, you know, at any time of the night and you need high dosage medica medication. One of the things she said, before she goes to the hospital, during her pain, she takes the time out to dress in a certain manner because she know that she's viewed um, as a black woman walking into certain spaces to access drugs. So if we have people in these spaces who understand mm -hmm. these situations and are not judgmental because of the color of your skin, then that would help uh, to go a long way in terms of the responses. Let, let's look at the other side of the equation. What are some of the factors behind why members of the black community face increased um, risk of certain illnesses? Okay, so some of it is based on the area, if we look at sickle cell, like certain areas in West Africa, Western Central Africa, individuals from those places are more prone to, to those circumstances. But if we look at the, the impact of racism on our health, on our experiences, our everyday experiences, on our stress level, on our uh, blood pressure, those things are, are, racism is real. It's, it's tangible for myself as a black woman, for, for the black community. So we need to have specific responses that tackle racism, that speak to these, these um, you know, racism within our social structure. Canada has been designed for mainstream and we don't, more and more immigrants are coming, there are Canadians who are born here. Uh, we need to have measures in the system to include uh, those individuals as well. The Black Health Alliance is doing great work within the community, but it's specific to an area like Scarborough here in, in, in Toronto. Uh, I have to assume that there are needs far beyond Scarborough, far beyond the greater Toronto area, and I have to assume that uh, the Black Health Alliance can't extend its help over there. Why do we need more groups like, uh, like yours? Okay, so the Black and Wealth Alliance actually is a registered nonprofit organization and we operate, we're um, registered to operate right across Canada. A, an organization that we secured funding for does operate in Scarborough, which is Taibu. It's a community health uh, center and that provides primarily uh, service to primarily black uh, communities. Uh, we, right now, there are people all over the GTA who have traveled all the way to, uh, to Taibu. They provide primary health care services as well as health promotion and other activities. So we need more services like that across Canada so that individuals in the black community can feel comfortable enough to access these services. There's a, a lot of distrust within different uh, spheres within the, the um, Canadian context. So to have these responses right throughout with the funding, with the uh, legislations, with the policies that are 
designed from top to bottom, not just at the federal level, but at the provincial level, at the city level, at the community level, so that we have that mainstream response is very crucial. Well, Daylon, thank you for coming in. Thank you for all thank the hard you. work that you do. Thank you for having me.